Well, praise God, it's getting to be really nice outside, nice and warm here in July 25th, 2019. Today is Thursday. And last night we had a great fellowship down at La Haya, a great Bible study. I'm really thankful for it. And I'm trying to describe, just talking to you guys today, is uh, what you might want to call a uh, group distinctive. It was kind of many years ago that I heard Chuck Smith speak about distinctives, those things that make a body or a ministry distinctive. And uh, I just began to think about a buffet, you know, where you bring a dish, everybody, bring, everybody brings something, you know. So it's kind of a weekly spiritual buffet, and we all bring something. And in that, I kind of love how God uses people in a study group. Uh, 14, chapter 14, 1 Corinthians, chapter 14, 26 says it. How is it, brethren, when you come together, every one of you has a psalm, has a doctrine, has a tongue, has a revelation, hath an interpretation. Let all things be done unto edifying. In other words, one of the purposes of the body of Christ is to edify and build up itself. You know, it's always the world and the devil like to, like to tear us down, and Christ will continually build us up. So, and I especially like to hear the quiet people who seldom say anything in a meeting. You know, God uses them, those undiscovered souls that really gain heart and boldness, you know, to share finally in a small group. And it's really a joy to let them speak up because it's sometimes like people can be quiet for weeks, you know. And uh, First Peter says something interesting. And it lets us know that the source is always Jesus Christ because everybody's got trials, everybody's got tribulations to come in the future as well as our past. And where can you really share the trials and burdens? You know, First Peter talks about the trials and uh, how it works us patience. But people have to take those things somewhere. And what better place than to your brothers and sisters? You know, sometimes in a crowd, it's very hard to share with anybody. And sometimes it's a little time, you don't have a time to make a special meeting. And even then, maybe it's just one guy that's speaking. So in Christ, it's got to be different. Fellowship is like uh, all these like-minded believers in Christ. And it becomes kind of like a medicine, kind of like a balm, a salve, a sanctuary from the storm that's out there in the world. So with the Lord, Peter says, if we go back again, it's joy unspeakable, full of glory. And he said it's a mystery to the world how it all comes together, how it comes and is activated. And the answer of, to that, of course, is that it works as a kind of dynamic, as a fellowship in Jesus Christ and Jesus being exclusive. So you look in 1 Peter 1, 1.8, it talks about Jesus saying, Though now you don't see him, yet in your believing you are rejoicing with joy unspeakable and full of glory. I think it's a while, at least for me, since I had some kind of real heartfelt joy in seeing people share, seeing people work out things that maybe they learned alone in their prayer closet, and, and now they're, they're bringing them into the study and they're sharing them. And, it's really a, a great thing to see because it adds so much dimension. And all this, you know, is easy to miss. The really an essential, vital place that fellowship holds in our total walk with the Lord. You know, we got prayer, we got Bible study, and also we got fellowship, and we need that fellowship. I know I do. So, you know, I see on YouTube, I'm kind of disturbed about this. It's like in YouTube, you see a lot of lone rangers that sit alone behind their keyboard. And they're, very, they're kind of critical. Well, let's say this, they're very critical of the church. And I know that can happen to anyone. You know, you get alone on your, on your computer. But I got to confess something, okay? I got to confess that whenever I fall into a critical spirit, I know I have to get back with brothers and sisters who, can't, who I can be accountable to. 
accountability because in my lifetime, I've seen Christians get swallowed up, taken over by a real aggressive critical spirit, a criticism of the body of Christ. It's easy to do. You know, we get frustrated if we're in it for years, you know, uh, it's, it's just like living in close quarters kind of. So, but the answer, you know, is always to hold up Jesus Christ more and more. You know, I know we can tear people down, but just hold them up. I fail. My brothers and sisters have failed. And if I don't, you know, if I don't get the right attitude check, my whole speech is consumed by what is kind of a wrong thinking. And what is, you know, I was thinking, what's wrong with other people or what's wrong with this church or that church? I think, as I remember, way back in the 80s, David Wilkerson put out a video, no, excuse me, a tape, audio tape, about the vision that he had about New York being destroyed and all that. And uh, he shed some light on it back in the 80s. He said he himself had developed this kind of prideful attitude that he had seen this vision and he was sure and other people were saying, no, it's not going to happen. You know, so it was like a very uh, force of contention that really um, made him stumble a little bit in his walk. Because I know in my lifetime anyway, I've been real blessed to have counsel of fathers and mothers in the Lord, mature people. I know one guy in particular way back in when I lived in Connecticut, this old guy had pastored a church for five decades. And, I believe, and he was saying that, I've seen a lot, he says. You know, in the 50 years, you, I mean, you gotta face it, man, the guy has fear, <laughs> seen a lot. But he said this, he said, beware of falling into a critical spirit. Why? Because it can steal your joy and let you spin your wheels for years and years with things. But it never builds anything, never builds up. Its talk will convince you to keep on, but you'll never see any fruit come of it. And instead, the Lord says, be constrained to build up the body of Christ by lifting up Jesus and knowing him. Jesus Christ and him crucified. We're going to zero in on that. And uh, the Lord said also, be patient to feed the whole counsel of God. Not just cherry picking scriptures, but give a whole bird's eye view of the whole counsel of the Word of God. And Jesus says in John 12, verse 32, he says that if I be lifted up from the earth, I will draw all men unto me. And that's something I learned, sometimes the hard way, <laughs> that it never fails, never fails to lift up Jesus. And the Lord shows you how to honor him. Another thing I learned from him was to feed the good food. If you're, if you're teaching or if you're preaching or whatever, feed the good food. Soon all the bad food, the bad doctrine, and all the bad things will pass out into the sewer and be flushed away. And you're going to find people saying what you're saying. Yeah, and when you've been fed enough, you see all these things change. And now it's talk about Jesus coming out of their own speech. So that's good. And being consistent in group study, getting back to fellowship, getting back to why because it really holds us to accountability we have someone there that we can speak heart to heart with I know this it's a kind of a tragedy but even a pastor may teach us but who's checking on the pastor who dares to draw him into a group you know not not, not happening too much we knew a guy way back in Connecticut who was going on all these mission trips and stayed away from his family quite a lot. But turned out he was seeing somebody. He was seeing another woman, actually. So it's a tragedy, really. And I think the biggest tragedy is that a, a pastor or a teacher, somebody can burn out. They can get so tired. You know, they study and they study and they keep studying and preaching and preaching a sermon. And, and then, then everybody shakes hands and goes home. There's no real follow-up, you know, in what has been said or discussion. Oh, God forbid, discussion. <laughs> or, you know, in the other case, it's either a study where one guy's talking. You know, it's supposed to be a Bible study, but you got one guy talking and preaching because the place is run pretty much on fear. And it's fear that somebody's going to get offended. 
And I got to say this, man, like it or not, people will get offended. They will be offended. That's part of life. And if you're breathing, you will be offended. But if the love is there, then the people will come back. You know, there has to be that. And that's the great part about it. Somebody commented, hey, what are you doing, Brother Bill, you know, talking against the church? And I said, absolutely not. They said, man, what are you doing? You're knocking the neighborhood church? No, that's not me. I'm not, please don't say that's, that's mine because not even close. I want to bless everybody. I want to see people prosper. But I think sometimes you could call it a rediscovery, kind of a learn by doing thing. And maybe it's just a reawakening, you know, that we have to have. And looking back to how the first disciples may have met together back in the first century, kind of a primitive time, you know, where the old-fashioned era is one of the simple friendships and love that come from one another. I think that's pretty basic, you know. I think you get that even in the world. You can have people meet together and have a drink or something. But, <laughs> but with Jesus, it's so much different because we're not on that toxic road. We're not in that worldly system. And one of the distinctives, of course, is that God is the final word. His, his Bible is the final word. But here's the thing. Everybody can get tired. You can get tired. I can get tired. All of us can get lost in the crowd. You know, it seems like when nobody can hear your voice, nobody can hear you when you cry for help. And somebody says, hey, I never cry for help, man. Not me. But you got to see this. Everybody gets a turn. I don't care how great and spiritual you think you are, you'll get a turn at this. That's sure enough. So I heard Christians say, man, they quit. They quit every church. That is absolutely wrong. Get back in church, some kind of church, and guess what? You're going to bring something. You're going to bring something because you've got a gift. It's very unique. It's very special, and you can bring it something. So if you can't find any church, start your own. <laughs> Somebody said this. Start your own church. But make sure you're founded on the Word of God. Not just cherry picking, not just getting into a, a cultic attitude. I heard somebody say that they got burned out. They started disliking people. <laughs> they work so hard in ministry. But you know, nobody cares about their sermons. And they got butt hurt. You know, they got hurt so they walked away. This is, this is the way things are. You just got a spanking from Jesus. That's all, man. <laughs> it, and guess what? It only hurts for a minute. you know. And then you know he loves you. And you see why it happened. And he draws you through the fire. And he teaches you through a lesson. you know. And, but you can look at some of these ministers. And you can say, what if this poor guy is being burnt out. He's bound up with worry. He can never relax and take his hands off the wheel just for a minute. And maybe let God show him some things. And really, man, it happens to all of us. And you don't have to get critical. You don't have, you know, but you do have to repent <laughs> if you do slip into that. Yeah, I said repent and, and let the tears go where they're doing, doing their thing, you know. Uh, but most of the time you find it's in you. You know, it's not somebody else that's got those four fingers pointing back at you. So here's a hard lesson for anybody, myself included. Sometimes we have to learn courtesy. Really, have to learn to meet and greet all over again, you know. And maybe then learn to smile all over again. Um, and I know people, in one place I went, they wouldn't even say hello to <laughs> It's, it's not funny, but I'm laughing because you can look back on it. And sometimes when you get strange, you have to leave a church for some reason. And then you feel repentive and you feel sorry and you miss people. I think, you know, go back. Make peace with the brother, the sister. Go back. Hug. Kiss. Embrace. Because most of the time, it isn't in them. It's right in your own head. It's right in you. That's a big revelation right there because Jesus built the church his body. He built it for himself. It's a bride. And he built it upon us who know him as Savior. And the church is not for the world. 
okay? It's not the beautiful experience, it's the fortress and the warfare. And it's where you may get hurt sometimes, but it's where you can learn to forgive. Forgive, <laughs> that's a big one for some folks. Uh, because the church's not for them, it's for you. And you see Jesus ordained the church and it's really quite unique when you think about it, you know. You got the fivefold ministries, you know. Where uh, Paul writes in Ephesians chapter 4, verse 11, he says, It's taken years, you know, to round up apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers. As it says there in Ephesians, So that we no longer be children tossed to and fro, carried about by every wind of doctrine. By the slight of men, cunningness and craftiness, whereby they lie in wait to deceive. And believe me, they do deceive. Why? Because man is wrapped up in himself, in his ego. The verse for 15 says, But speaking the truth in love may grow up unto him in all things, which is the head, even Christ. And 16 says, From whom the whole body fitly joined together and compacted, by that which every joint supplies, according to the effectual working in the measure of every part, making increase of the body into the edifying of itself in love. Really, that's how we exist. And I, you know, it's just hard to realize that it's not all sermons, it's not all teachings, Bible teachings. It's a big part of this is fellowship and how we get along with people. <laughs> Somebody says you gotta love people, even the goofy people. <laughs> and here's the goofy part about it, <laughs> is that it's made up of you and I, with all our warts, all our bad breath, all of this raw humanity to the core. I heard one guy say, hey, you know, I really get with the Lord when I'm alone, <laughs> and I can't deal with these people. Another one I heard was, uh, Gee, church would be okay except for the people. <laughs> but let's get down to this. It's kind of what I describe as a buffet. Everybody brings something. It's a group feast. If it's not like that, it's I, I, I just got to confess, I think it's lacking. If not everybody gets a chance to spill something or tell something or sing a song or whatever or contribute. And I like it because you can see people working out things in their life, speaking with joy about some discovery they made way back in their closet in, in a, at, their, at their house. They made this discovery, new thing that they learned about Jesus by, by themselves, alone with Jesus. And now they're here, they're eager to tell everybody about it. And so, you know, I think together we can look to God's Word, the Bible, and in that mirror, the Bible calls it a mirror, that reflects who we are. And that's all our warts, all our imperfections, all the flaws that we see. But especially overall is our faith and hope in Jesus Christ. And I like what Paul says, and he writes in 2 Corinthians 3.18. He says, But we all, with open face, beholding us in the class, the glory of the Lord, are changed into the same image from glory to glory, even as by the Spirit of the Lord. Wow. And that comes really when I know God wants me to break out of the old pit. You know, we can get in a pit. It's either an attitude, it's this funky feeling, or it's this animosity, or it's this critical spirit where everybody's doing it wrong and you're doing it right. And it's a pit that I dug myself into. You dug yourself into it at one time. But wow, you know, really, you can easily spend decades spinning your wheels in this funky attitude you got, trapped by some spirit that has no business hindering you in your joy, in your fellowship, and in your walk with the Lord Jesus. And man, I tell you right quick, that love of the brethren, the, it's kind of this grand circle where everybody either prays, holds hand, whatever it is, it's a fellowship that's endured for centuries. The same pattern. Two or more, right? Gathered together. Well, just to conclude here, I, I'm just thankful that I can welcome everybody that loves Jesus, you know, 
the world doesn't want to come, <laughs> but those that love Jesus, for any group time, group study, we have it Wednesday night. It's there. It's for you. It's been consistent. It's at 6 p.m., 1760 Salerno Road in Stewart, Florida. And there's also opportunity there to work and help and volunteer in the, that ministry of feeding the homeless. So God bless you this week. God bless you every week. And may he love you and help you and see you through this week in Jesus' name. Amen.